Good to know you're still with us. It's time to take a look at the papers, all the headlines, and with the help of our guest in the studio, uh, legal practitioner Liboros Oshoma, thank you very much for joining us. My, my pleasure. We'll be able to look beyond it and see what really is going on. My name is Felicity Ezewike. I've been with you since 7 a.m. Let's take a look at the nation newspaper now. Uh, 774,000 jobs, more slots for governors, lawmakers. We also have 40% 40, 40 for government officials. NDE takes over recruitment with ministers' supervision. That's the big one, the 774,000 jobs still, you know, pulling uh, waves. We also have a bit of money matters. Naira recovers as forex sales to BDCs near oil prices, foreign reserves up bit. Ghana faults Nigeria's closure of borders, Buhari's executive order. We are not ill treating Nigerian businessmen. Akufu Addo to meet president on matters of interest. Uh, those are some uh, headlines for you. Health workers serve strike notice in Gigi raises hope. Lawyers seeking MBA split rights Malami, Akwata to audit polls, and then a little bit of um, politics in Oyo. Uh, Akala leads Oyo APC. Uh, let me start. There's a picture on the front page. Um, I don't know if it can be on your screen now. Um, it's uh, migrants being assisted. Uh, by medical doctors. Uh, that's it, uh, showing now uh, people still take the risk other than uh, leave the life uh, that they have in their countries. Um, let's start with you. The health workers serving strike notice. Earlier on the breakfast, we talked to some doctors from uh, Ghana and uh, Cameroon, and they also expressed concerns about the welfare of doctors. Before we go to the uh, jobs, uh, What's your take? Yet another strike in the offing. Yeah, uh, it's quite unfortunate that, um, and then earlier on, I talked about the value that we place on human lives here. Yeah. Uh, because um, we would rather build um, you know, an edifice for EFCC than build an, a, a, a hospital well equipped with personnel. Even when we build massive hospitals, what standard has acclaimed? The personnel are paid little or nothing to even take care of those um, uh, war acclaim. And um, the, the you know, politicians that built them do not even see them fit enough to cater for them. So they would rather go abroad, spend huge taxpayers' funds, um, and then, um, you know, not forgetting that it's capital flight. And so if those funds, funds are domiciled here, it will have a multiplying effect. You can afford to pay, you know, your, your health workers. Uh, that's the unfortunate situation we find ourselves. And then with COVID-19, one would have expected, you know, that um, they would focus on refurbishing and rehabilitating the health sector and the health workers. But it became all rhetoric. So I listened to the Secretary to the Government of the Federation complain that he was not aware that the Guagualada General Hospital was that well, a lot, you would agree, a lot has happened in our health sector since saying, this pandemic began. The, a lot of so do you see a hoc, possibility of hoc, the Gige for stalling this uh, latest threat ad hoc, of strike? Mm -hmm. Ad hoc. So let's not um, give the impression that you know, there's been a total revamping. No, no, including no. the hospitals that we built in, in one week. They are what you can describe as canopies you know, put in place, you know, as on ad hoc basis. What has, we've increased, we've added 5% or how much to, to the, you know, the salaries workers. of our head workers, frontline workers. But how much of these have been implemented by states that are even owing salaries? You know, so it's a whole lot. A and, lot of and, and issues, so that's really. why we need to sit down, go back to all the reports that had been, an agreement that had been reached and signed with head workers and find a way of gradually implementing them. You can't implement all of them once, but we need to find a way of gradually. At least know, let's see a will. A, a, to, a will to doing it. All and right. then also quickly on um, um, the uh, jobs. jobs creation that went to politicians. And that's the unfortunate part of um, our national lives now. And that's why politics is the biggest business. 
you sit down for no for nothing you have you know um largesse and um favors to dispense and that's why everybody will go to to a politician in respective of his position because he has favors to dispense you have jobs that are created for people we even when i listen to uh, my very good friend Fessos Kiamu, you know shout his head out on the floor of the senate of the um yes the house of no the senate at the end at the committee sitting but at the end of the day he also still made a statement that some of the the uh, uh, positions had been allotted, 15% had been allotted to them, and that what they want to do is to hijack the, the entire uh, 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 job 100%. Then the question you now ask yourself, if you allot 15% to lawmakers, how many percent did you allot to ministers? How many percent there, did you there, allot to There are some who are even governors? concerned about the idea of the jobs itself, it, it, considering well, well, the I'm, economic I'm, realities. I'm, I'm, coming, I'm coming to that. And so how many percent did you allot to governors you know, House of Assembly members and councillors. So by the time you put all the 15, 15, 15 percent together, you find out that, you know, 101 percent, the job was actually, you know, created to feather the nest of political office holder. And then coming to the job itself, it is a job meant to enrich young and vulnerable Nigerians, 20,000 a year. And then the, initially, I, I learned it was supposed to be a training program. And then you ask, where are the jobs? They said you, some will be for construction, some will be for a Greek for three months. And you wonder what kind of jobs that would be, you know, for three months. Where are the construction? Where is government actually create constructing roads that you want to deploy everybody to that you or you just you know set out money as palliative and so you want to share to young ones. Uh, uh, for three months. Well, if, if it was you meant know, for not to, using, not to belabor the issue, direct but it was labor. meant to be um, a palliative. This crisis started, this pandemic started, at least for us, sometime in late February, March. Uh, we're now heading to September. Yeah. So how would these people have survived if the process is still but, you know, but, facing But so the same government internet? told you that they shared palliative, they shared billions of Naira right. in, uh, you know. During, Let, let's uh, move on. And that they are feeding school children that are sitting at home. And, and so for me, and that's why I expect that when you are, when you are into, when you're doing reconstruction, it's okay, yes, you have jobs, you want to do direct labor. And so if you're working in a quiet bomb, for example, you want to use the opportunity to train people and then also do direct labor. And that's where people will say, yes, there is a job vacancy here. But do you know what is happening? When you create opportunities like this and share money to, to young ones, you are encouraging, you know, um, lackluster attitude that it is don't worry you once you are associated to a politician without working you you just sit back and make money and that's why if you go to some of these communities you have youths who do they will do nothing even if you go there you you have jobs for them they will not work because they know that politicians will come and share money for them and yet right. these same politicians turn around to tell you that nigerian youths are lazy Interesting. Uh, let's go to the Punch newspaper and see what is making the headlines there. Uh, firm lists 33 Nigeria's UK properties, begins sales soon. That's it on your screen. I'll take it again. Contract judgment enforcement. Firm lists 33 Nigeria's UK property, begins sales soon. Above the masthead, you have banks borrow 2.08 trillion naira from CBN in four months. We are not ready for full resumption yet. That's Ogun, Enugubochi, others. I guess that has to do with the school's resumption. Um, polls, parties clash as IG fingers politicians in arms build up. Uh, there are more stories for you. Let's look at the one just above what I just read. FG constructing, rehabilitating 40 major bridges, says Fashola. Details of that story is on page 48 of the paper. Uh, and then this disturbing one, it seems to be a report from Ghana, just beside the masthead. You see 700 Nigerians involved in fraud, prostitution, robbery, deported. Uh, that's uh, from Ghana. Uh, before we go talk about the UK big screamer, let's look at that. How worrying is that for you? Um, we should be, as a government, we shouldn't uh, downplay issues like this. It's not um, enough to say Nigerians are being maltreated abroad. 
you know, the question you will ask is that why are Nigerians being maltreated abroad? You know, in South Africa, in Ghana, you know, and, you know, some other West African countries. And some would say, oh, because Nigerians are so successful in these places. But we also, also including in China, in UAE, we also should remember that as Nigerians, we carry, you know, um, the national identity of our country. We act as ambassadors wherever we are. How much of the laws, the local laws in these places do we obey? You know, some Nigerians have been alleged to go into these places, violate the laws with impunity, and then you expect what happens in your country, you know, to apply there. And so these people, who, for some of them, who are law-abiding, will not fold their hands and allow you come, you know, violate their laws and, and, and abuse, you know, their procedures. But then, taking the law into their hands in this country also, it's not encouraging. That, that's why the government shouldn't look the other way when, you know, it um, affects Nigerians because indirectly, we are very hospitable people. Indirectly, what you are telling Nigerians is that, you know, those of um, uh, uh, the people from these countries in, your, in our own country, that we should give met out the same treatment to them. And, 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 and at this stage, I think it's beyond just Nigeria and Ghana. It should be an ECOWAS thing now. And, you know, uh, the larger African thing, especially now that we're even talking about, you know, having an ECOWAS um, passport, uh, the currency. AU, AU uh, no, uh, 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 ECOWAS currency, we already have an ECOWAS passport. AU, you know, I remember Gaddafi had proposed, you know, one central currency and um, uh, integration that in Africa. That is certainly ways of... You know, so, yeah. but if you're having all of these teaching problems where there's, you know, xenophobic attack, where we're not, even as blacks, in America, they are the blacks are protecting, protesting that black, black life matters. But here, these are blacks to black. And right. yet, we do not want to see one another or that, you know, we do not want to respect the laws of some of these places. And, and, and so, it is something that it should go beyond just you know, the two presidents discussing. It should be a thing that the uh, um, ECOWAS should take up. If Nigerians violate laws in these places, All right, let's, they let's should see serve other the headlines. maximum, you know, sentence, method out to, you know, and not, and not maltreat them. Okay, let's look at, uh, before you take on the big one about um, listing firms, let's look at um, Gov's or Haneze Commander Buhari as Enugu Airport reopens. We spoke about this a little yes, yes. Um, earlier and you expressed some uh, reservation. Uh, but let me take some other headlines and then I'll let you just uh, take the one uh, that um, strikes out to you most. Uh, Buhari has assured us of peaceful election. That's a basaki. Uh, we also have, I haven't endorsed Oni's gov ambition, that's a fire shape. Uh, police incapable of uh, protecting lives can't govern Amotekun. And then Mark killed for accusing neighbor of sleeping with co-tenant's wife. Uh, those are some headlines for you. But I, I think yeah, you, um, the, the firm list 33 Nigeria's UK property begins sale soon. And then uh, Ohane is commending Buhari for the um, Enugu Airport. Yeah, um, um, we shouldn't be, first and foremost, um, on the UK properties and them. Um, at some point, I had also talked about um, the lack of confidence, you know, foreign firms have in our judicial process. It should worry us. And that's why you find out that uh, in most, um, you know, um, commercial agreements, even in Nigeria, you know, uh, for companies, you know, that are, are domiciled abroad, they will always insist that um, even in the event of arbitration, in the event of a dispute, the arbitration should be in, you know, in foreign countries because they know that when the matter is here, to enforce judgment is one big problem. And even the windmill of justice here grinds slowly. And so they might not want to stay in, you know, in a court resolving you know, crisis for eternity. And then also government do not obey court orders here. And so now you have... Um, a situation in the UK where already, you know, a firm is levying execution on Nigerians' properties abroad. You know, so you have an attorney general who is more interested in, in, um, in uh, issues in, in, in local and uh, uh, local issues than screaming headlines like this. I had expected that even before, remember the PNID crisis, even before matter gets to this stage, that the attorney general will be on top of it. They should have a department that handles matters you know, related to, you know, foreign judgment. 
you know, so that you don't, this is a disappointment, seriously. Um, and then before you hear it now, other firms that have judgment against Nigeria, you know, would want you know, to follow execute, suit yes. or want to hurriedly execute. All right, let's, let's look at the Nigerian Tribune this morning. Uh, the big one here is Water Resources Bill. Southern Middle Belt leaders go to court. That's, um, it has um, a quote. you find it on the front page. Uh, page five of the paper is where you get details. Let me just take that quote quickly. This country has lived in peace for several years with its lands vested in the governors through the Land Use Act, which is part of the Constitution. Uh, that's uh, a follow-up to the Water Resources Bill. Just above that, you're looking at, I did not meet with Obasaki, that's in Guinea, former REC. Um, businesses may not normalize till August 2021. That's a report. And then above it, you have poultry farmers lament continuous ban on forex for maize importation. Edo Ondo, IGP warns politicians uh, on arming togs. I, I saw that story, but the caption was quite different in another paper. Um, I think the caption was, IG raises alarm over importation of togs. Uh, uh, so, but because it's not captioned that way, there will be no point saying, uh, why is the IG uh, raising an alarm? So we'll just go to the water resources bill. No, I would, I would um, that's my state. I need to also, you know, quickly chip in a, a few uh, words before I go to the water resources bill, which is very, very germane and important for all of us to talk about at this time. Um, because... If you, if you look at the same headline, um, the resident electoral commissioner in um, Akwaibom raising alarm also, I did not meet with Obaseki. I had saw the reports, you know, um, accusing him of meeting with Obaseki and uh, cutting away money in bags to rig election and then also his own rejoinder to, this, um, to that report. Uh, and then, you know, the accusations and counter accusations against you know, amongst the uh, two dominant political parties. You, you know, you, and then the allegation of him importing togs. You ask yourself, why would I want to be used as a tog in an election? Because, like I said, politics is the biggest business now. And so politicians will spend, you know, any amount to ensure that they either remain in office or they want to occupy such offices. And if you're spending that much, and you include, you know, you want, to, you wouldn't mind killing people. How much of these people will remain for you to govern? And then if you destroy people's reputation, all because you want to occupy office, how much of, you know, um, uh, these people, you know, you would extend a hand of fellowship to when you eventually get there? Or if you want to compromise the process? You know, all so right. the question would be that election should be a game for us. And the umpire at every time, I mean INEC now, should ensure that they up the ante so to assure people of a transparent election. The IG should not just make statements. They should ensure that truly everybody that violates or circumvent the law is brought to book. And then lastly, to the water resource bill. This is something that every Nigeria should raise their voice against. One of the provisions of the water resource bill is that you even need permission to sink a borehole in your, in your house. And if by 1977, a community like Okwila, in Edo State, that borders Kogi, already had pipe bomb water, and in year 2020, nobody can boast of pipe bomb water in any state in Nigeria. And for you now to give yourself water, water that government had failed to give to you, you still need government permission. Then it is something that we need to truly engage our government on. And not, the, it is... Um, and then this idea of, you know, the government taking over all of the water resources and then granting permissions and licenses, they shouldn't treat it the way they treated the uh, oil resources in Nigeria. And that's what is creating big problems today, where some people feel you can't take our resources and give it to whoever you will. And then imagine a river in um, your community and then one man from uh, um, Kogi is given a license to you know, manage the affairs of, 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 of that uh, waterway. Right. You, you know, what you're indirectly creating will be problem and big disaster. And that's, that's not federalism. 
Federalism is not, we're, we're talking of restructuring. And yet, the federal government that had concession, almost all its responsibility, is it trying to take over the smaller responsibilities that you know, are valuable for the locals? And, and, and it shouldn't be that way. Government should be more sensitive. Well, now, Norton elders are rejecting the Constitution Review Plan. Uh, this one is on the Sun, the Daily Sun newspaper uh, this morning. Uh, they say, Norton elders reject Constitution Review Plan. Um, say exercise lacks merit, and then a group ask NAS to stop water resources bill. Still on the matter, there doesn't seem to be um, good uh, reception to it. Edo Ondo Guba, IGP raises the alarm over arms togs movement. I think this now captures what I was trying to say earlier. Magu Pro Panel Mills extension. Enugu killings. Ohaneze youths won against making Igbo land a battlefield. And from Kogi, tension as Supreme Court decides Governor Bellu's fate today. Uh, let's talk about the Norton Elders rejecting Constitution Review Plan. Um, you know, when um, sometimes another thing I wanted to talk about, um, that Ohanese um, eulogizing Buhari for the airport. Yes, everybody would, um, you know, be happy with um, development and um, rehabilitation in their region. But you find that, that gradually, almost all of this um, leadership group, they are gradually losing their voices because they, they now speak for a section of the people. Uh, that's not to con condemn the wise words of our, our leaders and elders. The same thing, uh, northern leaders uh, condemn constitutional amendments. You know, um, a constitution should be um, work in progress, it uh, should be a working document. At every time where we find out that there are some issues, we shouldn't, be, we shouldn't shy away from amending those processes because these are copied documents. We shouldn't shy away from amending them to be in line or in tandem with our modern reality, like our electoral processes, like, um, you know, we're talking about fiscal federalism, uh, also shedding the weight from the center. So if some person sit down and say they speak for the entire knot, I, I don't think uh, you still have that kind of, you know, one monolithic knot or one monolithic south or one monolithic east that some people can sit down and say they speak for the entire people. You know, just like recently when some leaders in, in the southwest spoke, I, I also heard some other person say, no, look, they are speaking for themselves. So we should also right. be sensitive to some of these issues when we reel out our, our, our grievance like this. Just like I'm here, I can't say now I speak for you know, a group, even my family, I can't speak for them. My, my children sometimes you know, have a um, contrary opinion to mine. All right, I must thank you very much, Libero Soshoma, for my your pleasure. time with us on The Breakfast this morning. My pleasure. And that's where we wrap things up on The Breakfast. As always, your comments and observations are welcome. You can find us via all our communication channels showing now on your screen. We'll be back later, same time tomorrow on Plus TV Africa with a fresh menu just for you. Thank you for watching.